Well, hi there, and welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor with Linda. And we're going to go to the table now. We did our artist inspiration uh, video of talking about this artist, Zoltan Zabo's book 70. Uh, oh, it's Zoltan Zabo's 70 water, uh, favorite watercolor techniques. And um, it's a uh, a, a video that you might want to look at and it talks about him a little bit and then we, we look through it a little bit about the things he did, the techniques, and he did use his own kind of brushes which we're going to do at the table and we'll do another video after this uh, about um, his uh, using the palette knives and I have two palette knives that are very much like the ones he had so I'm lucky I didn't have to run out and get those. If you've done oil painting you've used those before and maybe some of you have actually used them in watercolor. I never have so uh, that will be fun. We'll do some scraping and you know get into the paint and doing that but for today we, I'm excited about these brushes and these are his slanted brushes. They even have his name on them so I ordered them somewhere at an art store. I think it was Cheap Joe's Art Stuff actually a long time ago. I may still have them. I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, you can get slanted brushes like this though. You know they're not that without his name on them. But they're shorter uh, bristles and then they slant and then this is the large flat an uh, inch and a half width and then you've got the one inch one and it, they feel stiffer the hairs actually look different and I don't know if they actually are and then this is the half inch uh, but they certainly feel stiffer as they get smaller and so I'm pretty sure this one was for washes and I uh, uh, I've used these years ago. I had his video. It was on VHS, which I don't have anymore. But um, you know, you can probably still uh, find some videos of his out there and uh, see how he does it. But you know, he talks in the book, and it, you know, it's all in here how he uses these. So, so we're going to go and play around with these brushes at the table, see what they do, and uh, be inspired by his beautiful luminous ethereal work it's just uh, the colors are striking he manages to keep them so fresh and transparent so um, let's let's be inspired by this wonderful artist and um, all the beautiful things he has done I urge you to get the book like I said it's only between four and seven dollars to order it from Amazon or um, other uh, like thrift books these these kinds of stores so Ready, set, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so I have um, my Strathmore paper here on a pad, a large pad, pretty large, and I have the book here and um, I just wanted to just kind of peek inside and show you the of course the palette knives and of course he's got your regular flat brushes over on that page but here he's showing us all of the types of his own designed brushes of course a regular rigor round brushes over here to do some detail but um, he talks about these brushes um, you know and that they're these large ones are from one inch to even up to four inches. I didn't get that, but I've gotten the one and a half inch, I think. Yeah, or maybe maybe it's two. But um, anyway, so and he talks about how you know they he uses those a little bit there. And then here is the page where uh, I'm looking at things that I love in watercolor that I kind of want us to focus on, which is charging, you know, one color with another, which is a lot like our variegated video that you might want to look at it as well. It talks about, you know, bringing two colors together. This is more like charging one into the other. So it's a little more, um, I want to say there's a little more <laughs> active pushing that color in for some intense color. And then the other thing is back runs. And those are wonderful wet, wet, uh, wet on wet techniques. Uh, he's got other things here too which we'll look at in due course, but for now I just kind of wanted to um, start to look at that. So to continue our video, excuse my air conditioning again, it goes on at will in the summer, and I'm looking at a sketch that I did, okay, and this is on a small Strath Strathmore pad, and I've just got some loose things going on here, wet on wet, and I'm just going to try a flat wash here just to see if the brush is going to respond. 
Yeah, I don't know. I think this brush for me is going to take some time uh, just to get that wet enough to make that water flow, that paint flow down. It, it tends to not act like my typical flat brush, so I'm kind of going wild. So I just wanted to try a flat wash with it here and bring it down and on the side. More of that color, whatever color is that. Um, it's beautiful. I think it's Prussian. It's a lovely color. I don't use very often. Just bring it across. Okay. This brush you have to keep wetting it um, and then maybe blotting it wet and blot so you don't get too much water. Water management, that's what one of my favorite watercolor painters on YouTube says all the time. If you've ever watched Steve Mitchell, he's amazing, just amazing. Um, inspiration. I even commented once on his video saying I just love what you do and you know, inspire me to do this channel. So. Yeah, so I'm going a little bit lighter as I move down. Graduated wash, so, okay. And there's a little bit of white there. I'm gonna say with watercolor, it's probably best just to leave that. And I'm gonna just try something. This is thicker paper, so I'm just gonna wet it down a ways. And I can re-wet it. I'm trying to retrain myself to use this again. I haven't used it in a long time. And then we're going to uh, do like we did again with the sketch. And I'm going to go back to the smaller brushes here, okay? And we're going to go back to our darks, and I'm just going to start with those. So we're doing this kind of twice, you know, once on the Strathmore paper, and now I'm just going to kind of try it coming in here. And the paint's wetter, the paper's wetter, and it's better paper, so I think you'll see better results here, okay? You see what I'm doing there? I'm doing these little grassy things now. So, and they're spreading better now, like I would hope they would do with this, making sure we can see the whole thing. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. And then sideways. Okay. Now I'm getting what the brushes do. I knew if I kept at this, we'd get start to get it, okay? Yeah, okay, I need a little... I would like my horizon right line to be purple, but... Ooh, these are brownie black. I really like that. I'm going to go to some other colors in a moment, but let's see here. There's some orange, there's some gr light green, there's some nice, oh, I see now my big wash brush again. I can come in, do a little bit of soft washes. This will not just do sky, but it will also do some land. What color is that? There was some interesting orange in there. Here and there, let's see. That. Oh, it's a wash though. I kind of like the orange and the bristle, but I, I don't know if this bristle brush will do it. The small ones do. But let's find out. Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. Okay, that's nice. Can you see that there? Um, do some more of that down in her. Uh, over here, like. Make it random. Don't make it too, um, too, uh, the same. So, you know, I think the other brushes do that better. The smaller ones. The, they're more bristly. And... They are more um, able to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You can see those lighter, softer ones there. And yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is already better painting potentially. Um, a little more. Just bring in some soft wash because it's further back. So, you can use the side of the brush again, or you can start to kind of pick it up. 
see the value that brush does beautiful soft soft effect which is that luminous soft effect that I see in his paintings this is his brushes he designed so aren't they really awesome I like these a lot and some of this is just going to run and it's going to create its own hard edge and I'm going to let the brushes do it that's what these are designed for I really want to put some of this purple from my sketch there's the sketch in there, the purples in the sketch. I would love to get some of that in there if I can. Uh, and again, I'm learning what his brushes do. I'm gonna go to the middle brush, the one inch. The color is on there, it's the dark. Ooh, okay. We're gonna get that off, put on some purple on it. I'm not sure I'm gonna finish this piece right now. We'll let it dry. Sometimes you gotta let things dry and then know what to go back in to do, um, but I want to bring this bristle brush in and uh, do a little purples maybe in the uh, well, there's some in the sky but I could be able to really do that but yeah, but of course here, here I can do some here and here and here I might be actually painting on my sketch now <laughs> whoops Oh, here's my purple. Okay. And if I get some of these little hard edge little dots, I really find that creates texture and life to the painting. It's very nice, too. I'll do more of that, um, seeing how they kind of dry. And then here, I'm going to put a little bit, it's more pink in the picture, but I'm just going to add some in here. It's going to look a little more purple here, but that's okay. It's kind of showing up into the orange there. And we can actually add some of the little bits of information into my little trees there, maybe. Okay. Little detailed trunks. Those are just an interesting color up there. Okay, I hope you can see what these do. I'm sort of beginning to see what they do. I'm gonna go like this now here. Just bring up some little kind of grasses, like, like I'm seeing. thing makes you do something you might not have done. You know, it's different than I might have approached it with these different brushes. Oh, yes. I'm really wanting to add some, I don't know what greens I was using. I bet it's sap in there. I'm bringing some sap into the grass on the ground with this medium brush. The smaller one we're going to get some tiny little bits of information. The smaller the brush, the smaller the marks, the amount of marks you're going to make, your lines. Painting, guys, but it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. This one isn't going to be exactly the same if I try to do that. No two paintings for me ever come out exactly the same. I don't know how you would. I know for me that's the case. So. Let's 
so let's just say that when I was trying to pop you. <laughs> So, yeah, we're seeing what this does, right? Like I said, I've, this is such a difference from my flat brush and what all I do with it. You know, I... I feel total control with this, and these ones, I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Once you learn, and that's where you have to be patient with yourself, like I am trying to be, is that I'm not, you know, totally at home with these brushes yet. But they do add much more uh, abilities of um, different kinds of strokes. Look at these little interesting type trees, these little grasses, these trees in the background. Um, just, yeah, I just want to clean up this one. Something going on with that back tree there. Yeah, if I ever need to fix something, it'll be, I'll pull my big, my big it's not as big as I thought it was anymore, my flat brush. Um, yeah, so there you go. We're, we're learning. I think we've got some luminous, beautiful stuff. This, the way the paints have applied with those brushes is so luminous and soft. So I hope you can see that. I'll try to make sure I zoom in on this. Um, and uh, I think this is a painting I can definitely, you know, I'll just follow my little uh, sketch, but it's going to become much more than that sketch and there's much more that I can do to finish this into kind of an ethereal, soft, um, and beautiful painting. So I, this is our start with the Zoltan Zabo's brushes and learning what they do. The best way to learn, because I don't have videos anymore um, from the past, and also um, I don't have, um, you know, uh, it doesn't say in that book as much as I hoped it would about how to use those brushes. You don't, you can't see him using them. You know, it's not like a drill. So I had to do that and just watch and see what they do. And you're, you're joining me so we can experience those brushes. And now we're going to go from there to um, another video. Uh, I want to, you know, see what he does. And I do know it's different than what I did with these uh, palette knives. So we're going to use those. Um, we'll do some more of his brushes in that one, but we'll, we'll bring in uh, palette knives. I want to do how he brings them into the paint and does some rocks. We want to do that. Here, what's my other knife? Here it is. Um, this one, yeah, this one I have done before where I grab the paint out of the palette and you go whoosh, 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 and there's, a, there's some rocks. I'm so excited to do that again. I'd forgotten all about that. Again, this stuff might have been in the, I don't know, when I was taking classes in the 90s, 2000, I don't know, I was, this was probably 30 years ago, or maybe 25 to 30 years ago. So, you know, it's wonderful to rekindle it and to find that this, a lot of this influenced my style, but I, I really abandoned uh, his, his brushes and his, uh, his manner, and I'm really coming back to it, and I'm so excited. I'm glad you're joining me with this. So let's go back um, uh, to uh, a summary, and I'll show you how I'll finish this up a little bit, and we'll, we'll talk about it, and then we'll go on to the next video. Thanks for watching. this uh, painting with Zoltan Sabo's brushes mainly and a little of my own flat brush in there. I did add in some sky um, and a little color down in this area in the foreground. I didn't want to lose the white. What I really like about his brushes is how quickly you can get information down such as these little I don't know maybe they're cacti, cacti or something these little bush of plant flower or not out well, trees, <laughs> but I just love the little way that the, they get kind of fuzzy from the wet on wet with the smaller brushes. And then the tiny, the smallest brush, the half inch, I was doing these little dots that create little bits of land and little bits of information way back. And as it gets lighter, I kept it really soft and light. I'll put this behind me because it's always easier to see. Um, and uh, what I love, again, is not just the transparent, translucent look of what those brushes do. I don't know how it works differently. They're the shorter bristle, slanted brush, 
and again you get maybe it's because you get so much information quickly on it it, it just seems to apply more soft smooth and um, and just luminous I guess is the word I'm thinking of and um, we got to see how those brushes work so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you're inspired to try at least larger brushes right because um, that really pushes us to do that by having something like that some intriguing brushes right and it really did kind of make me realize that you know i've gone into my one inch flat brush thinking that's large but there are even larger ones that could really work he's even got a four inch brush man if you had a big painting you could really work that across so um that might inspire us to get larger too i don't know if i can still get these brushes online i'm gonna look and we'll see if i do i'll you know, I'll bring them, bring that up to you. And then um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say was that we're going to go from this now, the brushes, as Alton Zabel used to his um, use of palette knives. He uses them much more and in different ways than I was showing you. I was using them as one of the ways to do scraping, so check out that video when you have a chance. But let's, let's make some rocks. Let's make some textured land things. Who knows? I'm going to look at his book some more. We're going to get into it again and see what he did there. Um, I hope that this was very helpful to you. And uh, we'll, we'll keep on going with Sultan Zabel and this wonderful book that I refound in my library of small bookshelf here. <laughs> it's a small library right now. Again, the library is a place to check out a lot of these books may be there. Uh, and again, you can get them online, sometimes for really inexpensive. There may not be that many out there left. So um, if you want to find them, uh, I kind of saw in some places you could get you know, one copy of certain ones of these was left. So <laughs> same with the brushes uh, at Cheap Joe's and whatnot. They used to carry them. I saw one that looked like there was one left. <laughs> so. You know, we'll see where we can uh, find these. But anyway, it's definitely fun. It's been a pleasure. I will hope for you a most wonderful uh, journey with your watercolors. This um, is going to continue thanks to you all. We have many more subscribers every week, and I'm trying to post them as quickly as I can without, you know, going too fast because some of these I'm trying to make sure I maintain the quality. I might have to do a, uh, a taping more than once to get it get it right. So. So thank you so much for joining. You know what to do, and I will see you soon. Join me for the palette knives. <laughs> How exciting, right? Okay.